Hey, my name's Jay and you're watching Plasma Channel. Now recently I've been experimenting with static electric fields and how to turn something invisible, like a static field, into something a little bit more tangible. In the process, I got to messing around with dry ice. This is fun stuff, right? But I discovered that the fog reacts in a really, really strange way to high voltage. It's not just strange, but it's actually a little eerie. You can essentially turn a blanket of fog into a ghost drawing board and draw messages in the fog without even touching it. As you can see, this effect is really cool. So when I first saw this, I honestly said out loud, uh, what? Because I didn't really know what was happening. Now at first I thought, ionic wind coming from my fingertips, how cool. But I've worked with ionic wind before, I've shot episodes about it. It was behaving just a little bit differently. Before I dig into the science mumbo jumbo, I wanna show you how I did this so you can duplicate it on your own. I took a plexiglass tray and filled it with about a half an inch of warm water. Then I built a small plexiglass separator that I'll place on the edge, which covers up the dry ice. This allows the bubbling gas coming up from the dry ice to go around the edge and with a laminar flow spread out across the surface. A surface you can now draw on. Now in order to power this phenomenon, you're going to need a high voltage DC power supply. You don't have to use exactly as I used, but I used a mini Wimshurst generator. This guy actually puts out about 20 to 30 kilovolts. You don't need, okay, shh, 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 shh quiet, go, go to sleep now. You don't need that high a voltage. You can use about five to 10 kilovolts, get the exact same effect. What you'll wanna do is ground one of the high voltage leads to the power source and take the other high voltage lead and electrically connect it to your water. That's it, that's all that's needed. Taking our little chunk of dry ice right here, you can see the fog coming off of it, chuck it in the warm water and it'll get to work practically right away. You can see the separator doing its job, allowing that laminar flow to fill the tray. The tray really doesn't need to be acrylic, but I just have a thing for acrylic. I think it always looks amazing. Plus, it allows you to see how thick that fog is. I found that once the fog is about a half an inch thick, it is now good enough to scribble on. So let's talk about the science potentially at play here, right? Even though ionic wind might play a component, here's why I think there is a lot more to the story. First, most of the time, ionic wind tends to be messy and doesn't form laminar flow in free air. These fog tracks, more often than not, are very distinct, sharp lines. In particular, this track was a defined, hair-thin line emanating from my fingertip, from over a foot away. That's not messy. Second, it was a stream which always bent down to meet the fog at a perpendicular angle, no matter where I pointed, even if I point horizontal. And third, if it was a form of wind, then why isn't any of the fog blown away? Here's an example of ionic wind when I get too close for perspective. The fog is blown away. So ultimately, what is going on here? Uh, we might be able to gather a clue from what I think, hands down, is the most remarkable thing about this entire phenomenon, which I just mentioned, but I wanna emphasize that again which is you don't always have to point directly at the surface of the fog in order to make the effect. If you're anywhere near the four edges of the tray, you can point perpendicular to the surface of the water and as far as about a foot away, make your designs in the air with your finger and those designs will be reflected perfectly flat on the fog. I... <laughs> Here's what I'm talking about. My finger is horizontal and about two inches off the edge of the tray and you still have the effect. On this edge, I'm only about realistically an inch beyond the edge of the tray, but the effect is still quite clear. If you use a metal object though, that provides you about a three inch reach from the edge. And with some other objects, I was able to regularly get this effect at about four inches off the edge. But this was really difficult to film. So difficult to film, in fact, that uh, I was never actually able to get that one foot claim on camera. It happened twice off camera. I wasn't recording, I was just experimenting and uh, I scrambled around for the camera, but it was too late. I couldn't get that one foot distance to happen again, but it is plausible. 
However, after a while, I noticed a pattern that the force took from my finger around the edge. That pattern is represented here by these red lines, which look an awful lot like an electric field. Now, boiling this all down, I believe this phenomenon can be explained by two, maybe three scientific principles. Number one, ionic wind forming on your fingertip due to proximity to the charged fog. Number two, constricted air currents due to the high electric field gradients creating the thin lines. And number three, coronal discharge from your finger causing electrical contact with the water and thus repulsion of the fog. From my observations, that's my best guess at what is causing this super cool phenomenon. Now, if you believe you have a better explanation for what's going on, please, by all means, leave a comment down below. I can't wait to hear your responses. Regardless, you now know how to make ghost trails in fog, which <laughs> that's a pretty cool party trick, right? And you know potentially how it works. But quick safety disclaimer, use a low current power supply, something that is safe to touch anyways. Thanks for stopping by, and don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to Plasma Channel. Check us out on other social media, and feel free to check out our various other episodes. With science every two weeks, you stay classy.